and you won the fight. I'm sorry. Thanks. <laughs> Anyways, forget about this. Chidi, yeah, give them all applause for Chidi. So, so sorry. Hey, is everyone happy? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. All right. Um, I have this recurring nightmare that I come here and I'm standing like this, and I'm trying to tell a story, and the only thing that comes out of my mouth is like, <laughs> and, and that's all I can say. I can't stop it. And for you lot, like after about 137 seconds of it, you can't take it anymore. You attack me. Led by this gentleman here, and cheered on by the good citizens in this corner, right? And the reason I'm stuck in this modus is because my nerves were jangled earlier on in the day in a particular incident. And because of this, I can't tell a story. All right, what you have to understand, um, I really wanted to tell you a story. I had this brilliant story that I spent about 149 years, uh, fairy tale time, working on and crafting with the intention of delivering it at maximum volume. But I can't do that, because if I do that, the only thing that will come out of my mouth is gibberish and gibberish affiliated noises and so my reputation will be ruined squashed like a mushy mango tossed away and it will just be too embarrassing so i can't do that but what i can do i can tell you why i can't tell you the story i wanted to tell you in the first place okay. so today today my nerves were jangled multiple times multiple times and it just put me off balance. It, it made me afraid. It made me think that if I came to the Mezrab and tried to tell a story, I'd be ruined. And what happened is, earlier on, I was in Rotterdam. I was in Rotterdam. It was a nice visit, um, easygoing, interesting. It, it was pleasant up until the moment when I stood with nine and a half other people, three dogs, one hamster, waiting for a tram <laughs> to take me back to the station, get in the train, and come back to Amsterdam. And that's the first time my nerves were jangled. Because what happened is, as the tram came to a halt, the doors began to open, somebody out of nowhere on the inside lane, young lady about 20, 22, skipped along as if none of us were there, and jumped into the tram. Every single one of us, including the hamster, we were all like, <laughs> how is it possible? How is it possible? And then, to make matters worse, when one of the old guys said to the lady in Dutch, mevrouw, do even normaal, which for those of you who are not Dutch, means, young lady, think about the children, you're setting a very bad example. She, she just put her hand like this and said, whatever. And we were like, oh, not again. Terrible jangling, two jangles within one minute. This is for getting to Olympic level nerve jangling. Here. So the tram was half empty and I couldn't sit down because I was jangled solid. I was like, <laughs> however, the good thing is, you know, every cloud has a silver lining. And because of this good woman's behavior, I was now alert, I was sharp, right? So for the next phase of my journey back to Amsterdam, I was like a super ninja, you know? What you did, just think of what a ninja is to a normal person, then I was that to a ninja. So I, I was really sharp. So there I am on, on, on the platform, the train comes in, you know, we've got our moves, the, you know, the, the beginning of the Friday afternoon rush hour. So there's this hustle going on. And so my right flank is okay, because I've got some kung fu going. <laughs> and then on my left side, I know it's a bit naughty, but I actually had an, an old Dutch lady by the scrub with the neck. Wait, 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 wait. You know how cats carry their kids by scrub with the neck? And I'd, I'd asked her, are you okay? She said, yeah. So, as the last three passengers left the train, I swung the lady around. Her orthopedic clogs created a space which allowed me to move it, twist her around, put her onto the, tra onto the train. She looked at me and said, gotcha. <laughs> And I walked in, and I sat in my favorite seats, which are the two seats looking at each other, so you have a bit more space. So I put my coat up, sat down, put the armrest down, 
And that's when I read, uh, uh, received Jangle number three. Because as I began to put the armrest down, this kid jumped on and took over. He took over. And I mean, if you don't know the code, the code is if you started putting the handrest down, <laughs> then it's yours. You own it. <laughs> you own it. I don't know what they teach in schools. <laughs> Obviously the wrong stuff. So anyway, I decided, you know what, I'm going to be really adult about this whole thing. And I pretended the kid wasn't there. I just shoved his arm off. <laughs> and that is when... Yeah, number four. Because I tried to shove his arm off the armrest, but it, it didn't move. It was like trying to move Everest. It didn't budge. It was like a sort of spinach-powered kid. I couldn't move his arm. I couldn't move it. And because of the situation, he's a kid, I'm an adult, macho just came into me, and suddenly I've got this idea, this is a stupid kid, there's no way this kid's going to block my move. And so I decided, OK, I'm going to use all my power, all my power. So I put one hand on the wall. <laughs> I squeezed. I was squeezing and squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. And the worst thing is, I got hit with jangle number five because I began to lose territory on the armrest. The little kid, the little kid was pushing my arm off the armrest. I couldn't take it. I panicked. I'm not, I know I shouldn't. I know I'm meant to be a wise person, but I panicked. And I panicked. I just went bam on top of it. <laughs> I know it's so wrong, but it's actually not so wrong because it turned out not to be a kid. It was just a little guy. <laughs> a guy with a bald head and this sort of glowing red birthmark in the shape of a hand on his forehead. <laughs> I looked into his eyes and his eyes, they were dark and they were raging and they were like sort of inverse volcanoes and they were twisting and they were horrible. And I thought, I had this funny thought, I thought, you know if I had eyes like that, I should probably be a sort of evil villain in Hollywood. I'd have lots of money. I'd sort of be the guy with the inverse, uh, what do you call it, uh, um, volcano eyes, or like this. And, you know, I'd be famous. But at that moment, at that moment, this little guy, he leapt at me like a pitbull, like that. Fortunately, I had the super ninja move, so I swung around like that. But it was terrible, I screamed. I didn't want to scream, I lost all my ninja moves. The guy was hanging on here, not tight enough to break off my arm, but tight enough to hold on. And I'm running up and down the carriage, running up, running up. And, and you know, the horrible thing is that everybody started looking out of the window like, oh, that's a nice cloud over there. Nobody wanted to know, nobody wanted to help me. I'm screaming, get off me, get off me, get off me, he wouldn't get off. Eventually I saw a guy with a pointy umbrella, I grabbed the umbrella, I sort of shoved it down, I tried to wriggle it loose, but it, it, it was tight, it was tight. And I, and I thought, I'm going to have to fight this guy all the way from Rotterdam to Amsterdam. I'll be worn out, I'll be ruined. And the only good soul, the only good soul in this compartment was the little old lady I'd helped on earlier. And what she did, she came up and she grabbed the, bar, the guy by the nuts. Now, now um, wait, just, if we hold the vision for a second, we've got the guy fighting me, me in a panic, and the little old lady holding him right now. I just want to address the sort of young ladies in the room here, because the more experienced women, we, we, they know about negotiating with their men. When, 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 when you're starting off in a relationship with a man or a boy, sometimes he won't listen to you. He won't listen. And you shouldn't start screaming, you shouldn't start shouting. No, 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 no. You lull him into this sense of comfort and security. <laughs> and at night, when he's lying in bed, legs apart, you capture his balls. You don't squeeze them, you don't squeeze them, it's a negotiation. You capture the balls, and I assure you, all fog will clear from his eyes, all wax will leave his ears, and you will understand everything for the next ten years. So, so, old lady, little old lady, has got the guy by the balls, she says, I think you better let go. He lets go, she lets go, and I kicked him. I know. It wasn't like a last minute penalty kick. It was more a sort of, you know, friendly lob over the goalkeeper, you know? Yes. 
and the guy sort of rolled through the air and landed in his seat. He landed in his seat, gave me a double thumbs up by that, and I said, I see you. And so I spent the rest of the journey, I was shaken, naturally, not stirred, but shaken. I spent the rest of the journey thinking about things like, who made the universe? And, and so eventually I got here. I got here. I uh, hijacked to back feet. The mother didn't like it, but the kids were very happy. They loved the experience. And I got here, I got here. And because I am so shaken and so, so jangled, it is impossible for me to tell you the story that I want to tell you. So I hope you have a little drop of sympathy for what I've been through today.